Hi, this is Bitluni and today I'm going to show you the worst oscilloscope in the world. This video is sponsored by Eisler. More on them later. Let me start with the features of this awesome oscilloscope. It's made from this flip dot display that I got from a viewer named Jacob. Uh, he just sent it to me and it has like 25 by 16 pixels that are physically flipped by electromagnets. It's a quite awesome technology from the 90s that was used in public transportation. You can rarely get them from eBay and so on. So I'm ha really happy that I got that one. It has one probe that is mounted to the PCB of the oscilloscope and if you turn it on it will start with some prepared images that I uploaded and then it will continue with the roll mode. This mode can be found on other oscilloscopes as well. It's only capable of measuring DC voltages between 0 and 3.3 volts. Let me connect it to a waveform generator. This is a sine wave. This is a square wave. You can maybe hear that the update rate of the display depends on how many pixels are changing. So there is a little bit of optimization, but it's not perfect yet. Okay, let's turn it off again. So that's basically it. There is no trigger signal. There is nothing else than this fixed roll mode. You ask yourself why I would build something like that? Everything started with my one day challenge live streams in August. In the first episode, I collected the ideas from the chat and then let the people vote what I should build within one stream. 20 seconds left. Friends, I see, I see many votes, 111 votes. 112, what are you doing? Okay, votes are over. Ha! No! Stop voting! <laughs> 41 watching, 111 votes. I have to improve my voting process. We have 21. Okay, flip dot oscilloscope wins. And that's how we started. Since I didn't know much about flip dot displays, I started by educating myself on stream by watching another YouTuber's video. D9000 made a quite interesting and good video where he also built his own board. So the display is made from many coils that are flipping the dots. The dots have a small magnet inside. So if you change the polarity of the electromagnet, the dot will flip. We started by flipping a dot just by putting current on the coil and it actually worked. Then I started to measure every pin on this connector. We figured out that this specific display has a small limitation. You can't reset an individual pixel, you have always to reset a complete column. With the display Jacob also sent me some low side and high side driver ICs. We hadn't enough to drive the whole display but we could do a third. We figured out how to connect it to the driver ICs and started wiring everything. The low side drivers have a 595 shift register included, so we started to write some code for that and tested it with a pink LED. Okay, one success. Pink LEDs became a meme since then on my streams. It has to be included in every project now. Just as that, the fondue is also mandatory. Why is there a fondue? Because I, I need to stay nutritioned. This, 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 my secret is there is always a fondue. <laughs> Getting full control of a dot from the microcontroller was quite time consuming. We had to add the high side drivers and also an external MOSFET board to reset the pixel again. Okay. The first dot flipping from the microcontroller took place after seven and a half hours already in the stream. This is a flipping dot. From there on we had a run and added some wires and had immediately like 16 dots running. Unfortunately we ran out of pins on the ESP32 since the high side drivers didn't have a shift register included. And we need one high side driver for the row and for the column. 
To get more IOs, I used what I had at hand, and in this case, it was this I2C PWM expansion board. It adds another 16 channels of PWM. We didn't need the PWM part of that, but we could use it to control the high side drivers. At this point, people went to bed, slept, got up and joined the stream again, and we were still rolling. 13 hours into the stream, I found my last copy-paste bug, fixed it, and then we were able to drive the complete section of the flip dot display we had drivers for. I had here set instead of reset high, copy-paste error. Oh, that's so typical. And now I turn on the power. Are you ready? <laughs> we improved the refresh speed and just two hours later the oscilloscope was ready. <laughs> the worst oscilloscope in the world. Oh man, this was hard. Look at this, uh, the wiring here. This is crazy. Looking at the Frankenstein mess of wires, I was really happy that we managed to complete our first one day challenge. But it also meant that I would have to add even more wires to address the complete display. Since we weren't on the clock anymore, I just took the time to start designing a PCB for that. I also took the opportunity to dive into KiCad. It has some oddities in the usability, but other than that, the PCB design tool is quite cool. After one day of designing, I had a sweet board. Basically what I changed to the former design, I didn't use like this PWM expansion board anymore. I just used basic 595 shift registers to control the high side drivers. The ESP32 Mini is just plugged in in the corner. There are screw terminals for the power, for the probe and for the remaining half bridges that were left on the board. We can basically use this in future to control other motors. Using KiCad has also the advantage that I can basically take the project and upload it on Isla, which is today's sponsor. They offer PCB manufacturing, stencils, they can even deliver parts with your PCBs to have a complete kit. And they can do also assembly, which we will test another time. I used the Blitz option where I placed my order on Monday and even without expensive express shipping, I got the boards on Saturday. It just came with my regular mail. Yeah. The pricing is quite reasonable. My boards would cost around 6 euros if I would wait a few days longer. The blitz option, however, cost twice as much. The boards look great. The registration of the layers is perfect. I ordered all the components I needed and also some sockets where I can place the true hole components. So if anything breaks, I can basically replace it. And here is the obligatory soldering montage. <laughs>
heatsink is necessary because of a lazy design decision on my side. I put there a 5 volts regulator that drops from 24 volts and it has to drive all the ICs and the ESP32. It has to dissipate around 10 watts. We can put there like a buck converter, but these are rarely available currently. So I just put a regulator there and we are done for now. To honor the contribution of my viewers, I also scheduled a stream to perform the first test. We only found one small error where the gate was driven by 24 volts and we basically changed it to 5 volts and then the board actually worked. Moment of truth. Wait, it's not connected. Okay, again. Yes! <laughs> okay. To protect the electronics, I designed the case and 3D printed it. It is from two parts that really don't fit perfectly, but it's already the third iteration and I can stand another six hours print time. So let's leave it like that. So what's the future of this project? I don't know, it's a bad oscilloscope, but it's a cool display. I will use it probably as a vintage display on my wall and control it over Wi-Fi with the ESP32 inside. If you are interested in the design files of this project, you can find them in the description, as well as links to the parts that I've used in this video, as well as a link to Isla. Please test them, they were cool to sponsor my quirky video here. Also great thanks to all my supporters that were so patient and consider maybe joining my live streams on the secondary channel. I link this also below. Bye!